Hi, and welcome to the show. I'm Nancy Guppy, coming to you from one of Seattle's great movie theaters, SIF Cinema Downtown. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Cinerama. Opened in 1963 as Seattle's Martin Cinerama, this beloved theater was one of only three movie theaters in the world capable of showing three panel Cinerama films. In its 60-year history, the theater has been through numerous ups and downs, including nearly being turned into a dinner theater in 1997, before Paul Allen swooped in, bought the building, and initiated a multi-million dollar restoration. After a brief shutdown in 2020 due to COVID, the Allen Estate sold the Cinerama Theater to SIF. And in 2023, the newly renamed SIF Cinema Downtown opened its doors for business. From the large curved screen, state-of-the-art sound system and projection capabilities, plush seats, sparkly lighted ceiling, and of course, that legendary chocolate popcorn, SIF Cinema Downtown delivers a movie-going experience like no other. For the theater's full screening schedule, go to SIF.net. We've got an excellent show for you, including Mini Mart City Park. When we found this project, it was an old abandoned gas station with legacy pollution 16 to 20 feet below the surface. Called her at Sam. And music from Stereo Embers. And we'll begin with Tina Garrick Albro's homage to Metro Bus Line number seven. I grew up in Rainier Beach, and I rode the number seven bus my whole life. I like to say I learned about life riding the number seven. It's such a long route, and it traverses so many diverse neighborhoods. It's a little sampling of the world if you ride the number seven. Rainier Valley has changed a lot. So I'd like to preserve a little bit of that history. The Columbia Hillman Arts and Culture District, they started putting the word out that they had these small grants. So I decided to apply for one of the grants and that's how it came about. I've always made art and I started doing it uh, professionally about 10 years ago when I found printmaking. I love that the printmaking process is so involved and it's so uh, meticulous. Printmaking is really deep. There's so many different methods of printmaking. There's dozens of different processes and you can combine them. So. I feel like I found my home there. The colors work. About 20 years ago, I told my husband, I need to write a short story called Writing the Number Seven. I never wrote that short story, but I um, did a series of collagraphs, which is a kind of printmaking of the number seven. I started that about five or six years ago. And um, this is the way I've expressed uh, my story of writing the number seven. I set an intention in 2021 to work bigger, but I wasn't thinking I'd work this big so fast. <laughs> to be really honest, I learned that I still, at my age, like to bite off a little more than I probably should. Another artist said, you should put people on the bus. And then I started thinking about it. I thought that would be cool to put people on the bus. Shea Cherie, I knew that her portraits really captured people in a unique way. Every time I pick up the brush after the first few minutes, Something else takes over, I stop thinking and get into that zone. And it does feel like that if when you're a passenger on a bus, you just uh, get into a, your own headspace. My part in this mural was to paint the portraits. The amazing thing was to 
learn about all these people. My dad is the last person on the bus and my aunt is the first person on the bus. The driver is Leah and she drove the number seven for years. The family standing in front of the bus are uh, Susie, Lou, and Mondo Bancaro. They've lived and worked in this community for several generations. And Susie is really special to me because she was my second grade teacher and we did a lot of art in second grade. And then everyone else, I would call them heroes on the bus because they're all people who were so involved in making our community a better place. So many of the people here really kind of moved the ball forward in our community. Each of them has done a lot. It's so funny that I just finished painting this and now I'm cutting it. It's a little nerve wracking. But if we get through it, the theory is that it should come apart without, without any problems. So we'll see how it goes. He knows what he's doing. If it was just me, I'd be terrified. Here it goes. There we go. Sweet. Ha! Way to go. We got plenty of room. Part of the arts revitalization project was to like bring some life to spaces that needed some life and uh, the bus goes right by here so everyone riding the bus south will see it and all the pedestrian traffic here will see it. <laughs> You're so welcome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We just found out and so we were luckily in Seattle. Hi, are you related to Oh my gosh! <laughs> she wanted to see her mom's painting. I'm so glad you're here! Captures her perfectly. Yep, there she is! There she is! I'm touched. It's just nice to be recognized. I'm 60, so thank you! <laughs> it's just been really exciting to see what she's done with this. I just really love love the mural. I think it's so perfect because he rode the bus a lot. He didn't drive. Without these types of things, statues, murals, things that help us know who we are as a community, it would be a very boring place. Every, every other place would look the same. I don't know if he ever rode the bus, <laughs> so, but it's representative that he spent 95 years in Rainier Valley, so it makes sense. I hope they say, oh, it's the number seven. And then they look at the people and they think, who is that? And then they learn more about their community's history. I don't know where it's leading next. It's a journey, you know? We're, we're all on some kind of bus. I'm on mine. Check out Tina's mural on the north side of Columbia City Gallery in Columbia City and learn more about her art practice at tinagarrickalbro.com. The band Stereo Embers went their separate ways a few years ago, but there are rumors of a possible reunion, fingers crossed. So with that in mind, here is Rob Benson, Tim DiGiulio, Ben Brunn, and Cassidy Layton from their 2017 performance of Wagon.
We'll keep you posted on those reunion rumors. In the meantime, listen to more Stereo Embers on Bandcamp. Sutton Barris Color. That's John Sutton, Ben Barris, and Zach Color are Seattle-based artists who have collaborated for over 23 years. SBC's projects have ranged from installations to performance, public projects to straight-up gallery shows. But in all cases, the trio's aim has been to engage and provoke unsuspecting audiences with artworks that are often not what they seem. Case in point is their latest endeavor, Mini Mart City Park in Georgetown. Hey, I'm Ben. Welcome to Mini Mart City Park. Come on in. We are a pocket park, a community center, an environmental remediation project, and an art gallery based in Georgetown, near the steam plant and across the street from Bowling Field. In our main gallery this month, we have Trying to Reach You, work by Hannah Pierce and Michael Hernandez. Michael works in glass and neon, and Hannah works in ceramics. This is the first time they've collaborated together, and we're really excited about the outcome. We are part of the Georgetown Art Attack, so we have shows every second Saturday. We host a film series, do workshops, teach murals, and are open for the community. Basically, we're a flex space that is used in many different ways. One of the cool things about this project is this air sparge system that we had installed when we built the building. When we found this project, it was an old abandoned gas station with legacy pollution 16 to 20 feet below the surface. It hasn't been touched in decades. And so what this system does is it blows air 16 to 20 feet below the surface and it wakes up bacteria, which is just dormant sitting there. It eats whatever is there, which happens to be gasoline. It off gases it and is captured by a series of tubes that's sucking up the air into a charcoal filter and out the top of the building. So far, in two years, we've removed 200 pounds of petroleum and expect the system to run for another three to five years before the soil is cleaned up. Among the many programs and workshops that we offer at Minimart City Park, we've also partnered with Urban Artworks to teach teens classes on how to paint murals. They're scattered throughout the site. We're here on the roof where we've implemented a lot of stormwater infrastructure. And the idea is to keep as much of the rain off of the streets and help keep the community safe. Um, we have a green roof, bioretention planners, and the idea is to keep everything on site. We also have good news that we just acquired this property next door where we're gonna expand a kitchen, classroom space, and then eventually we're going to implement an artisan residence program on the top floor. We've had a ton of support from the community and the city and the state, and we'd love to show you the space if you wanna stop by. Well, thanks for the visit today. Learn more about Mini Mart City Park, including hours and location, at minimartcitypark.com. And see the broad range of Sutton Barris Colors artworks at the trio's Seattle Gallery, graycusera.com. And now, a short list of art events for your consideration. In Forces Unseen at Harris Harvey Gallery, photographer Peter Delory captures mysterious or peculiar sights that he encounters in his travels. These unexpected still images suggest the evidence of forces that are all around us, yet which remain unseen except for their effects on our natural world. Forces Unseen runs now through January 27th. Pacific Northwest Ballet is bringing back their beloved rendition of Swan Lake. Masterfully choreographed by founding artistic director Kent Stowell, this production features stunning costumes, off-kilter scenic design, and the undeniably iconic score brought to life by the world-famous PNB Orchestra. Swan Lake runs for 10 performances, February 2nd through the 11th. And finally, Calder in Motion at Seattle Art Museum features the extraordinary work of Alexander Calder, the American artist who revolutionized sculpture. Ranging from the miniature to the monumental, these 45 pieces gifted to Sam by John and Kim Shirley are being presented to the public for the very first time. Calder in Motion runs through August 4th, 2024. And that's a wrap. 
Big thanks to SIF for hosting us at their newest venue. And for a complete schedule of screenings at SIF's four locations, go to SIF.net. And thanks to you for tuning in. Have a great week, and we'll see you at the movie. Mmm, chocolate popcorn. <laughs> <laughs>